I'm walking into Twin Oak Elementary and it's a beautiful, sunshiny March spring day. Unfortunately, it's not a typical day here at Twin Oak or in Mount Vernon City Schools. As you can tell, the hallways are quiet, the classrooms are empty, and we miss those voices. Almost every student came in on third grade to pick up Chromebooks. And all their work, teachers are working really hard on, on their online. They're doing their, they're making copies for the kids who don't have online. And they just miss everybody so much. 15 years ago, yesterday, was when everybody came into this school for the first time. And we can't wait to have everybody come back and celebrate with us. Because we have a great school, we have great kids, and we love you all. Be safe. Almost every single day we're serving almost 800 breakfasts and lunches to our students. That doesn't just happen. Nearly 30 employees show up here every day uh, to prepare those breakfasts and lunches. We're going to take a quick peek inside and just see how that all works. You notice the ladies here. They've gotten here at 7.30 this morning and they'll stay till well after 12.30 getting these meals ready to send out to each of our nine locations. I'm proud just to share with you some of our amazing food service workers who work in various buildings throughout the district but are coming in, uh, quite frankly, and working every single day to make sure our kids can get fed. Any of you have anything you might want to say to our kiddos? I know you shared with me how much you miss them. We miss our children, and we're so happy to serve the Mount Vernon community. Uh, it's so worthwhile to do that. We love our children, and we have a wonderful community. We've had wonderful, wonderful volunteers. I cannot thank them enough in the other departments, so kudos to everyone. We have some amazing things going on in education right now, and we have teachers who are doing some amazing things. I'm standing here right out in front of the Kokosing River, and we're going to sneak in on Steve Farmer. Steve is a, a science teacher at the high school. We're going to see what he's doing with a physiology class. Let's go take a look. So just know that the intercostal muscles are the ones between the ribs, and we use them for breathing. And then the other one would be the diaphragm, this big dome-shaped muscle. It kind of serves as a boundary between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal pelvic. And once again, you should know that that is for inspiration as well. Good question. What else? Uh, it's, a, it's a new experience, all right? And we've only got three days in, and we got a lot more time. Hey, Steve. How's it going? Good. There. Hey, Good to see you. Up, up, up. How's it going, Cedar? Hey, I hear you're doing some great things online. And, uh, we thought we would just sneak out here and see how classes are going. So, how are they going? Going good? Hey, not bad, not bad. Doing a little Zoom lesson here with my students. Uh, physiology, trying to get some muscles down. We're in the muscles unit right now, and uh, the online stuff is, is working. It's, it's working. Kids seem to be adapting okay? I think so. I mean, it feels like we've been doing it for a lot longer than maybe eight days, but uh, so I think it's picking up. Well, we know it's not the end all be all. The technology has lots of advantages. Obviously, we'd like to be right in the classroom with our kids but you know when I see your lessons online kids are right there they're looking at you you're talking I guess it's got to be the next best thing in spite of our circumstances. Yeah I think everybody's making the best out of the situation it's not replacing face to face I just don't like to see my kids every day and you know the interaction's a little bit more of a challenge getting kids asked questions online I don't think they're used to that yet but I think, I think it'll come I mean I think for like you said what we're having to do we're, we're making a run out we got a lot of good teachers in the district and a lot of good things. And 
I think we're ahead of other districts. I, I agree with you. We got some folks doing great things, and what a view! I mean, this is a classroom right here, looking out over the Kokosi River and and talking about the muscles of the body. If I needed to have a classroom, this is this is the next best thing, right? <laughs> Steve, thanks for sharing with us, and and uh, we certainly. Uh, want to make sure that our uh, our parents out there, our community knows, our teachers are really working hard to make the best of a difficult situation, and it's efforts like these that are just really special to see. I've been receiving some questions from parents and students alike, and I thought I would just take an opportunity to answer some of those questions as best I can. The first question we had is, will pick up and drop off procedures be the same this next week? And the answer is yes. We've tweaked some of those uh, operations on several different occasions and feel we have the right mix right now. So next Monday, we'll have the same drop-off pickup procedure. Those students whose last names uh, end with A to M, your pickup will be from 9 to 11 o'clock. Students whose names end in N through Z, it'll be 11 to 1 o'clock. Any other students who can't make that time, we are providing a time from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock in the evening for drop-off and pickup times. We are doing something a little bit different during this pickup time. We're actually going to be distributing Chromebooks to our second grade students. We had a tremendous success at taking Chromebooks down to our third grade students last week. We've seen teachers do an amazing job of connecting with their students. And we feel our second grade students have the capability and the capacity in which to do it. So we're really pleased to be able to provide that Chromebook opportunity for them as well. We understand that technology isn't the end-all be-all and students should be, shouldn't be in front of it all day long, but it allows us an opportunity to connect, to pass along homework and various different educational pieces. If you don't need a Chromebook, uh, feel free to tell those who you, when you pick up your work that you don't need one, that you have a device at home. Otherwise, we'll be happy to provide you one with one so we can stay connected. Um, the other question that we've gotten is, what about spring break? Spring break will be April 6th through April 10th. It's the original calendar spring break that we had. We did have some conversations early on about potentially moving that uh, if it would have gained us any advantages and gotten us back to school a little sooner. It became apparent pretty early on that that probably wasn't going to be the case, so we did not change spring break. It will be April 6th through April 10th. Our teachers need that time off. They've been teaching that this online remote learning for the past three weeks. And quite frankly, your kids need a break too. And parents, you need a break as well. So April 6th through the 10th, we will not have educational classes going on at that time. However, we will be continuing to serve lunches and breakfasts. Uh, on April 6th through April 9th, those four days there will be normal at our nine locations serving those breakfasts and lunches. However, on April 9th, we're going to serve two breakfasts and lunches to your students at those pickup locations. We want our staff and we want you all to have Good Friday off, and so we'll make sure that we provide that additional lunch and breakfast on Thursday, April 9th. Another question I get is, what's going on at the legislative level? What's ODE doing about this? Well, the House just passed a bill, Bill 179, last night. I suspect the governor will sign that today. And it will answer a number of questions, anywhere from will we be required to take the state graduation test? What about the third grade guarantee? What about graduation? Those are answers that will be forthcoming and we'll make sure we share those with you once the governor signs that information. Um, another question we've gotten is why are the playgrounds closed? Well, if you recall the governor several days ago did shut down all playgrounds. And I think there was two worries with that. Number one, a lot of students were going to the playgrounds and playing at the playgrounds, and we weren't able to kind of keep that social distance that was really important. Secondly, um, the way this virus is transmitted is still a little bit unknown, and there's a sense through research that maybe touching the bars and some of the slides that that virus can stay on those for a longer period of time than we once thought. So for your protection, um, we have closed those play playgrounds. We hope to open them very, very soon. Another question we've gotten is, will we have to make up these days at the end of the summer? And the answer is no. Right now, we're in school. It's not the most ideal situation. We'd rather be in the classroom, but we're working every day teaching your students. Your students are learning every single day with your support um, through this online remote learning. So these days count as school days. So we will not be making these days up over the summer. 
Another question I get often is, do you know when we're going to get to come back to school? I wish I had the answer. I can tell you that we hope and pray that you can come back to school as soon as possible because that's where learning takes place the best. We'll be waiting on the governor's announcement here in the next couple of days about what the plans are to reopen schools. I don't know what those are. I realize that we have to be mindful of the health and safety of everyone, so we'll certainly go along with whatever orders come our way. If it's to come back to school on a particular date, we'll be excited and we'll celebrate. If it means we have to continue remote and online learning, we'll continue to do the best we can, but we'll make sure we keep you informed as it relates to when we'll be able to come back to school. Another question I get is, can you provide me some tips to help my child learn at home? We understand, parents, that you are taking a, a big role in your child's education, especially as you get down into the younger levels, and we're so appreciative of that. But if we were to provide you some tips, here might be some that we would do. Have a designated spot for learning is key. It doesn't have to be fancy, but it should have the basics. Their school books, paper, pencil, art supplies, tissues, and even water. Most teachers would agree that a schedule is key. If you just let your students sleep in till whenever and start their online stuff whenever, it doesn't seem to have the same kind of uh, structure that really provides them the best learning environments. So develop a schedule. Some parents come up with it themselves, others let their kids make it themselves. Either way, we need to hold our students accountable uh, for the time and the work that we're providing for them. A couple extra tips from, uh, might include remove distractions. Make sure the TV's off in the background. Have a quiet place in which to do it. Set clear expectations. Make a checklist. Schedule in breaks. Students aren't used to being in front of an, uh, used to being in front of a computer all day long. It's not healthy. Make sure you schedule breaks. Let them run around the yard. Let them play. Let them do some things, and they can always come back to the work. Help your kids stay connected. It's important that they actually get a chance to see friends and talk to other people. We're doing that in a variety of ways, and with Chromebooks going all the way down to second grade, we'll be able to have those connections and touch points. But they can write letters or make phone calls or text. Uh, make sure they're using proper phone and uh, website etiquette. Finally, I think it's really important to monitor our students' health. You know, we kind of take for granted that our kids are just resilient and, and they don't really understand what's going on. Trust me, they understand what's going on. Their world has been changed a little bit here. Take time to sit down with your students. Talk to them about this situation. Assure them that we're all here and we're all in this together. I think it's really important to make sure we think about our students' uh, mental health. Finally, keep reading. Keep reading. Read anything. It'll be good for all of our students as we move forward. We have some amazing instruction going on throughout the district. We've highlighted a few things for you in this update. I know principals will be communicating specifically about things going on in their building with you as well, so I would encourage you to keep up to date on those communications. As we get more answers to your questions and questions to your answers, we'll make sure we continue to provide you with that information. Thanks. Be assured, we're going to get through this uh, pandemic. We're going to get out on the other side of this, and there'll be a time very, very soon where we'll have students back in our playgrounds, back in our hallways, back in our classrooms.